All right, how's it going, y'all? Today, we're gonna to be going over how to set up your true NAS core NAS as a Plex Media Server. This is a great function of a NAS because it's already got all of your files on it, and that just means you can automatically share all of your video files to just about any device in a really great format. Plex is great because it automatically figures out what the movie's supposed to be if you name it correctly, and it also has the ability to do what's called transcoding. Transcoding is where it basically takes one file format the video might be saved in and changes it into another file format based off of whatever the client device is. So say you're on mobile and you still want to be able to stream your 4K videos. Well, what Plex can automatically do is just downsample that video to whatever file format your mobile device wants and so you can still play those massive files without having to stream all that over the network and in a file format that your phone will understand. Though this process is very CPU intensive, especially if you're doing it in real time. The good news is most true NAS servers are self-built and therefore have much more powerful CPUs than your standard off-the-shelf NAS, but you do need to make sure there's a lot of guides out there on what kind of CPUs can handle what kind of Plex transcoding, and I'll go ahead and try to link a couple of those down in the description below. All right, and so in this video to install Plex, we're going to be installing it as a jail which is very similar to the concept of a Docker container, and actually jails were before Docker. It's just they only work with free BSD rather than Linux, which is much more popular, which is what Docker uses. And so unfortunately, Docker does not work on free BSD, which is the operating system that runs TrueNAS Core, which means you're unable to use Docker containers, but there are still a fair amount of jails available for free BSD units. So what a jail is, is somewhere in between an application and a virtual machine. It has a lot of the great traits of an application. They run very lightweight, they use the host OS's resources, and you don't have to create its own operating system. But it also has a lot of the advantages of a virtual machine. They can all be run independently, and should one go down, it will not take the host down. There's a layer of security separation there, which means that if a jail gets completely corrupted, it does not have the ability to infect the host at least in most cases. It is theoretically possible. It's actually theoretically possible on a virtual machine for it to infect the host, but it is very unlikely and is going to be much harder to do than running just an application bare. So within a jail, you end up with your own file system, you end up with your own structure, you end up with your own shell, you end up with your own kind of self-contained operating system that is almost acting as a middleman between the free BSD kernel that is actually running the operating system and this jail's operating system. And so they're pretty cool and there's a lot of stuff you can do with them and they also make installing third-party applications incredibly easy. So the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna go ahead and log into our TrueNAS core system and we're going to go into plugins. So you'll see right here there are two different options. There are plugins and there are jails. So a plugin is a pre-built jail. This is things like Plex right here that are basically pre-configured jails that will automatically work for you. Then you can also create just bare-bone jails which work as their own BSD operating system. So if you need an application that you do not have in a plugin, you can actually create your own. It's pretty complicated, but it's something that allows you to very safely run your own applications using very little resources, but also being segmented off from the host OS. So should anything go wrong, only that one part is segmented. All right, and so as you can see here, we've pretty much got two different collections, the IX systems and the community ones. And as you can see right here, Plex Media Server is part of the official IX Systems ones. These are basically just ones that IX Systems themselves say, yes, these are good, we've checked them out. And so they're quote unquote official plugins. If you wanna look, there's also a ton of community plugins here too. And they updated actually fairly often. You can see there's already a Chia one. All right, and so since we're doing Plex, we're gonna go back into IX Systems one, and we're going to select the regular Plex Media Server. You can install the beta if you'd like to. I believe this one does require the Plex Pass. And so we're gonna go ahead and click on it and just hit install. And we'll just go ahead and give it a name. We'll just call it Plex. And if you've not set up a plugin before, it'll go, hey, hey, I need a data set for all of the plugins. And you'll just go ahead and set that up. I show that in another video that I'll link in the description below. And we're just gonna go ahead and set it as DHCP. And yeah, we don't need any other configurations here. We'll just go ahead and click save. And so now it is going to take a minute. And so once that's done, we'll go ahead and get back to you. All right, and so now it's finally gone through and installed. It did take a minute and I went on into the jail section because now that the plugin is created, it is created as a jail. So once you've done creating it in the plugin section, it should pop up in the jail section. 
And the other thing we can go ahead and do is we can go into storage, pools, and check out your IO cage. That's where all of your jails live. You go down to IO cage, jails, and you should see Plex right here, which is perfect. All right, and so now let's go back into jails and let's go ahead and see what's inside of this thing right here. We'll go ahead and start it up. All right, and so the first thing we actually wanna go ahead and do is we wanna go ahead and stop it. So that way we can edit it. And now we're going to go ahead and need to make a data set for it. So that way we can actually start having our movies and everything we want within Plex. And so the way we're gonna go ahead and do that is it's pretty simple. We're just gonna go ahead and create a new data set and then we're going to share it using SMB. And I'm assuming you've already set up all your user accounts for that. And if not, I've already got a video on how to set up ACLs that I'll link in the description below and it shows you how to set all of this up. So I'm gonna kind of fly through it. So the first thing we wanna go ahead and do is create a new data set that we're gonna have as our Plex media. So we're gonna go ahead and go into pools and on whatever volume you'd like to use, just go ahead and click create, add data set. And we'll just call it media. And we'll just say it's media for Plex. Pretty much all the default settings are gonna be good. The one thing you do wanna change is the share type, change it to SMB. And we're just gonna go ahead and click submit. All right, and so now we should see right here, we've got this media. And so what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that our user has access to this. And so what we're gonna go ahead and do is click edit permissions. And so we can see that since we set it up as an SMB share, it is defaulted to ACL, which is exactly what we want. And so pretty much all we really need to do is we need to go ahead and give our user access to this. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're just gonna say who, and we'll say a specific user. And then if you've got multiple groups that you've already got set up, you can do that as well. And we're going to say who that is. So for me, that is going to be me. And we're going to have the ACL type as allow because I want permission to it. And we'll give myself full control over it. And then we'll just go ahead and click, okay, save. And so now our user, when we're logging in over SMB, should have shared access to this. And so now what we wanna do is we wanna set this up as an SMB share so we can easily add data into it. Do that, go into services, and you're gonna just need to go ahead and make sure that SMB is enabled. You've probably already set up SMB, but just in case you haven't, this is how you go ahead and do it. Go down SMB, yes, go into sharing, and Windows sharing SMB. And now we're just going to create a new SMB folder, and we're going to go into that media folder. And in this case, default is exactly what we need, so we're just gonna go ahead and click Submit. All right, perfect. Now we have this SMB folder media, so now we can start dumping files in there for Plex. So let's go ahead and open up in Finder. So if you're on a Windows machine, just go ahead and connect to the SMB share using Windows. And if you're on a Mac, you can use this. Go to Server. You've probably already done this before, so I assume you know how to. Otherwise, check my TrueNAS tutorials. And you can see just like that, I was able to mount this media folder. And so let's just go ahead and add in a new folder here. We'll call it movies. And I'm just gonna go through and dump in a couple of my videos in here. So these are high quality ProRes files. And so they're going to be absolutely massive. And so the average web browser just could not handle that amount of data. You'd be just streaming. It might actually be faster than gigabit. Probably not, but it would be a ton of data. So one of the great things about Plex is it's able to do transcoding, which means that it will say, okay, this file is just not right for this browser and be able to say, you know what? I'm going to downsample this. I'm going to transcode it into a more efficient codec and then send it on over. And so that's one of the really cool things about Plex and why it's got a huge advantage for things like this. And so for videos that you want to show up and have the actual title in there and everything, you do need to name them based off of Plex's naming convention. It's pretty simple to follow, but I'll go ahead and leave a link to that in the description below. And if you do follow that naming convention, Plex will automatically go, okay, I know exactly what that video is and be able to pull the metadata, the actors, the poster, everything, and just make it a really beautiful experience. And so since obviously these are my videos right here, they're not in any movie databases, we're not gonna get that, but you could totally do that. So now as these are transferring, as you can see, they're massive files. We're gonna go back in and set up a couple other things in Plex. So now we need to go back into our jail and we need to go ahead and change the mount points. 
And so we're just gonna go ahead and click actions, add. And we're gonna say where it is, that source. So this is the source on our actual true NAS pool. And so that's that media folder we created. And our destination, that is within the actual Plex jail. And so this is actually how it works. It pretty much is a virtual link there. It's really interesting. So it doesn't actually pass in our entire data set. Instead, it just allows links to data sets that we set up and passes them in like that. So what we wanna do is basically say, okay, the mount speed media is actually the media folder for Plex. And then you've got an option here for read only. It would technically be a little bit more secure should anything happen to Plex and basically a hacker go, oh, I'm gonna delete this entire media library. But it's also nice to be able to use the Plex UI to delete media. So I'm actually not gonna just set this to read only. If you're worried about that, you can always also enable snapshots and hopefully you'll be able to find that in time and you should also have backups. So we're just gonna go ahead and click submit. And so now the next time that Plex starts up in its root media folder, it will actually be basically directed into our media folder that's actually on the parent data set. Now, it's not gonna be able to do this natively. It does still need ACL permissions, and unfortunately, they don't pass through the user. You actually have to use the user ID. And so the way we look that up is pretty straightforward. We're going to go back in and we're going to start her up. And we're just gonna ask the shell. So we're just gonna go ahead and click start. All right, and so now Plex should be up. So now we can just go into the shell and we'll just ask it who it is. So we'll just say ID Plex. And so right here you can see that it's user ID is 972. And so that's actually the user ID that TrueNAS, the actual operating system is going to give it. And so that means if we say give user ID 927 access to this folder, it will have access to the folder. And so the way we're gonna go ahead and do that, just like we did before with our first user, is to go back into storage, pools, and just edit the ACL. And so we're just going to add an ACL item, and we're going to say a specific user, and that user is going to be 972. And it's going to be able to modify because that way Plex can delete everything, but you can also just say read only. Real quick, one thing I forgot to mention, you do need to hit apply permissions recursively. Otherwise, the movies folder that we just created using SMB when the user ID did not exist will not be added in. And so now we're just gonna go ahead and click save. So now our Plex user should have full access to that media folder that we passed it in and therefore can see those videos we added into it. And so now we just need to go back into the jail check out its IP address, which is 10.0.0.168. And so what you can do is you can actually set this up on your router as a DHCP reservation and set it to whatever IP address you want. That's really what I would recommend. Or you can also set it up as a static IP address, which is not too bad because you can still edit it from within here. But setting up everything on your router just tends to be better and you're less likely to have issues. However you like to set up static IP addresses, you can do it here. And actually, if you just let Plex totally control it, it'll do it on its own. All right, and so now that's all set up, I did want to also point out here that we can go into the plugins page. And if we let it load for a second, it's actually going to say, okay, since I know this is an official plugin, it'll have a little bit more information here. Specifically, it'll have the admin portal, which makes our lives really easy. Just go ahead and copy that in and post it into your web browser. All right. And so now it's saying, hey, this is unverified. What I'm gonna do, I've already got my account in right here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click sign in. You can sign in, you don't even have to sign up. You really can choose whatever you'd like there. And we're gonna go through the normal setup options. And like I said earlier, it's a good idea to change this to a DHCP reservation on your router. That way you always know the IP address you're getting. Though technically, Plex, if you're just using their apps and sign in through their system and you wanna go that route, We'll handle that all for you. And so it actually doesn't really matter because Plex will just find the device because it's talking. And so that way you never have to remember the IP addresses or anything like that. Plex will just say, okay, his account's this and connect everything. That's up to you if you wanna set that up. All right, and so now we're in Plex. And so it's gonna walk us through it. The first thing we need to go ahead and do is set up the actual media. 
So it's gonna say, okay, we need to set up a server. So we'll call this FreeNAS. Drew NAS, whoops. Then there's this option right here, allow me to access my media outside my home. That is up to you with a security thing. One thing I would recommend, especially for Plex, change the default port. It makes it really easy in the web UI to change the default port for external access. And the reason for that is there was actually a vulnerability found and these were only on systems that were not patched that actually allowed a lot of Plex systems to be used in a giant DDoS attack. And so that is one reason why you just wanna change the default port. It's really easy to, and that way you never have to worry about, hey, first line of defense, people are going to be scanning for that Plex port. They're probably not gonna be scanning every single other port if they're just needing a bunch of extra bots. And so that's just one thing. I'm gonna disable it for this, but it's all up to you. All right, and so here, it seems odd, but there's actually a glitch. I'm not sure if everybody else has experienced it. We actually have to go through and just click next on this and set up your media after the fact. I'm not really sure why, it is what it is. So now we get brought back to here, and now we just need to go ahead and click manage libraries and add them in here. It's pretty simple, you just go ahead and click add library, and we're gonna select movies, do this for every single one of the libraries you wanna create. We'll name it movies, and we'll just browse for it. And remember, we put it in the root, media movies file and just click add. And so now just like that, we have our entire library in there. So let's go ahead and check it out. And so as you can see, lovely me in my face, it's great, we'll go ahead and click on these. And as you can see, this is going to be a massive video file. So let's go ahead and say convert and boom, just like that, it is going to convert properly for us. It is probably going to take a bit, so let's go back into our free NAS and just see how much CPU this is taking up. And you can see it is taking a lot. And this is a two CPU configuration I've got running here. And since that media is so massive, it is taking a ton to transcode it down for this. And so it is definitely huge. We can also choose down to maybe just a 1080 and it probably won't be as large. This is basically the worst case scenario. I don't think anybody would ever store media like this long term, but it is definitely there if you need it. So we can just click through the video. You can see it's a little bit slow, but once again, I threw about the worst stuff at it possible. And so it's basically using an entire CPU here to try to encode this and send it over to us. But it seems to be playing back okay. We're at basically half usage. That's because of NUMA. It's only gonna be able to use exactly one of the CPUs, so it's hovering maxing out that one CPU, but it is handling it and it is buffering ahead of time. This is also, once again, worst case scenario. Any other regular file, it will do just fine, most likely, depending on your CPU. But that's all there is to it. It is really easy to go ahead and do, and now you've got all the videos in there and you can really just manage your libraries. It's really easy to set up and the jails make it segmented off where you can shut this down without taking out the rest of your operating system, which is really important because a NAS should be a NAS first and then second, all these additional peripherals. And that's really what jails allow you to do. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this tutorial. Go and leave any of the tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.